Well, bicycle gearing is something that, um, on the face of it, is quite straightforward. But um, when you look into it in more depth, there's quite a lot to it. I think when I was younger, you know, you'd choose a bike, you'd look at the brakes, you'd look at the frame, and you'd choose, you'd you'd purchase your bike and you'd bring it home and um, you'd know that the the gearing was the latest ABC technology or the teeth had all these special design elements in them to help the the gears change freely and. In terms of ratios, I never gave much thought to ratios. You've got a low gear and you've got a high gear. and you, I think when I was younger, at least, I used to just leave that to the manufacturer. More recently, um, as I've considered riding recumbent bikes, um, the low gearing is very important on a recumbent, more so than on a diamond frame, because I guess your worst-case scenario on a diamond frame bike when you're going up a very steep hill is if you find it too hard to push the pedals around any longer, you simply hop off and you walk up the hill and really that's what I've done all my life on a diamond frame. Um, when it comes to riding a recumbent, the theory is different. You don't want to hop off, you want to stay on the recumbent, whether it's a, a conventional recumbent or a trike, and you want to spin in a nice low gear so that you remain on the bike. And that means that recumbents tend to want to have um, a better uh, low end range in the gearing, uh, sort of a more much lower gears and probably more of them than you might find on a traditional diamond frame. And so, in choosing a recumbent trike, in my case, I wanted to do some calculations and sort of try and figure out in my head um, what gearing I would need on the bike that on the trike that I was going to buy. And to do that, I started to get into understanding gearing in a way that I never had before, and um, and I learned about gear inches and development which I thought I'd talk a bit about here. So the whole idea of gear inches is that gear inches is just a number, like 20 or 40 or 125, and it's a relative measurement of comparative bicycle, bicycle gearing, assuming you've got identical crank lengths. So what it really means is that you can take bicycle A and you can look at its gear inches in low range, in its lowest gear, granny gear and maybe its gear inch number for its high gear and you immediately can then compare it to bicycle B or trike C um, and and say well this this machine has lower gearing or it has um, better hill climbing capability than say this machine and you can make sensible scientific comparisons about the gears before you buy. Um, Looking at this chart, which I lifted off Wikipedia, you can see that generally um, a very low geared bike might have gear inches numbers around, say, 20. Um, that's your granny gear. So if you're on a racing bike or on a mountain bike, um, typically you'd find um, on a mountain bike you might have a gear inch of, say, 22 for your granny gear, something like that. Um, at the other end, when you're in your highest gear going down hills, um, if you had gear inches over 100, then you should be able to achieve some pretty high speeds, uh, depending on your cadence and so on. So, gear inches is simply a number, but it, uh, it's a helpful number because if we work out our gear inch number for our low gear and our gear inch number for our high gear, then all the other um, gears in the middle of that range um, will help us during the ride, but it's those two extremes that, that really define the capability of that cycle to go up and down hills. Um, the other interesting term is development, and it, very simply, if you rotate your pedal one full revolution, how far along the ground or how far forward does your cycle move? So the, the, gear, the development calculation is related to gear inches in that um, we can take our gear inch number and simply multiply it by pi. You might remember pi is the mathematical constant relating to circles, circular wheels on a bike. Without going into the maths, if you multiply your gear inch number by pi, then you'll get how far forward your bicycle will travel in inches for a full revolution of the cranks. Inches these days, perhaps metres is more useful. So once again, trusting me on the maths, if you multiply pi by the conversion of metres to inches, of which is 
0.0254 times by pi, that equals 0 0.08. So very simply, if you can calculate gear inches, you just multiply it by 0 0.08 and that's how much development you'll get on that gear. So an example might be um, if you had a 20 gear inch uh, gear setup on your bike and you multiply it by 0 0.08, that will give you how far in metres uh, you, you will travel forward. So uh, let's say um, a 23, um, 23 gear inch racing bike in its lowest gear would then, if we multiply 23 by 0 0.08, we get 1.84 metres. So that's how far forward that bike would go in its granny gear with one full rotation of your pedals. Similarly in highest gear, if that racing bike had a highest gear inch ratio of a gear inch number of uh, 92, then you multiply that by 0 0.08 and you get 7.3 metres. And um, so that means for every time you rotate your crank in your highest gear, your bike will move forward 7.3 metres. Okay, so why is, why is why are these calculations of interest? Well, I just thought I'd sit down when I was looking to buy my trike and have a look at my mountain bike and say, well, you know, that, that granny gear that I've got on there is pretty good. What actually is that in gear inches? And if I had that same sort of granny gear on the trike, perhaps that would be sufficient or maybe I want something slightly lower. So I, I worked out that a typical mountain bike like mine had uh, a front triple crank set of with a 22 tooth a uh, small sprocket, a 32 middle chain ring and a large chain ring of 44 teeth and it had a rear cassette of 11 to 34. So looking at the calculations here, the the gear inch calculation is simply the ratio of the front to rear sprockets times by the wheel diameter in inches. Very simple calculation. All you do is count the number of teeth on your front sprocket, count them on your back sprocket and then multiply it by your wheel diameter. So in the case of my mountain bike, I had a 22 inch um, tooth sprocket on the front, which was my, my smaller sprocket, divided by my largest sprocket on the back, remembering that your lowest gear comes from the, the combination of the smallest front sprocket and the largest rear sprocket. So 22 divided 34 in my case, multiplied by my 26 inch wheel, gave me 16.8 or approximately 17 gear inches on the mountain bike. Now referring to the table above, you can see that if very low is considered around 20, then 17 gear inches is pretty good. And of course riding my mountain bike around, my granny gear is um, quite acceptable um, on a diamond frame bike. If it gets much lower than 17 gear inches, you probably find that you're pedalling so slowly that you may not be able to maintain your balance on a two-wheeled bike. Having said that, of course, a trike is a totally different proposition because you don't have a balance issue at all. You can sit on that hill and maintain your balance as slowly as you wish to, to pedal. Um, and unlike a diamond frame, you're not going to want to hop off a trike and push it up the hill, so you do need lower gearing. So I did some calculations um, and I worked out that um, if I... Um, that uh, with certain combinations of gearing I'd be able to get my gear inches down under 10 for my lowest gear and up over 136 for my highest gear. So if we look down to point 0.4 here, these were the, these, this was the strategy that I used to determine the gearing system that I wanted for the trike. So what I decided to do was use a Schlumpf mountain drive on the front. And for those of you who don't know, instead of a triple chain ring on the front with a conventional derailleur, you just have a single, single, simple, single sprocket on the front. But inside the hub, or inside the bottom bracket, the, there's planetary gearing um, provided by the Schlumpf Mountain Drive, and that will give you an opportunity to reduce whatever your front sprocket tooth number is by 2.5. So in my case, I went with a 55 tooth front sprocket, just a single sprocket. But when you tap the uh, the front bottom bracket hub um, with your heel, it clicks in and you get a 2.5 times reduction. So if we divide, let's do that just for interest, if we divide 55 
by 2.5. So I've got a 55 tooth sprocket, but I'm getting a mechanical advantage of 2.5 times from the slump mountain drive. That's equivalent to having a 22 inch front sprocket in lowest gear. So the way we do the gear inch calculation again is we say, okay, 50 front tooth sprocket, number of teeth on the front sprocket divided by the number of teeth on the rear sprocket. So it's 55 divided by 34 in my case, but we've also got that 2.5 mechanical advantage from the slump mountain drive. So we have 55 divided by 2.5 divided by 34. Now in my case as well in the rear hub, as well as a, an 11 to 34 uh, nine speed cassette, inside the hub I have a SRAM dual drive inside the rear hub and that gives three hub gears. The middle hub gear is one to one so it doesn't change anything. The taller hub gear is 1.36 times mechanical advantage and the easier hub gear is 0.73 a reduction. So in this case calculating my gear inches um, is a bit more complicated because I've had to divide by 2.5 my front sprocket. I've also had to multiply by 0.73 which is the mechanical advantage of the hub on the rear and then multiply it by my wheel diameter which in the case of my trike is a 20 inch. So when you multiply all that through you end up with 9.5 gear inches. Um, having ridden around on that I can tell you it is, it is incredibly <laughs> low gearing. Um, you pedal like an absolute mad thing and you get don't get far at all. But coming out of a very steep car park which might be sort of near vertical ramp or um, maybe even pulling a trailer on a tour or something like that, there will be times where it is you just don't want to run out of gears on a trike. And so as long as you're not compromising your high-end gears, it's great to have the extra low gears. So 9.5 gear inches um, on the bottom end provided by the mountain drive at the front and the SRAM drill drive at the back and a standard 9 speed 11 to 34 cassette. Um, the gear inches for my highest gear then calculated as follows, you've got a 55, the same 55 tooth front sprocket but with the mountain drive clicked in the other direction um, it just has a one to one ratio so it's multiplied by one or has no effect so it's just 55 tooth divided by the 11 tooth sprocket on the rear of the cassette um, but then we've also got the mechanical advantage of the dual drive hub in its highest speed setting as well. So that's we multiply by 1.36 there and then the wheel diameter of 20 and that gives us a gear inch number of 136. So if we refer back to the table here which suggests that a very low gear inch number is around 20 and a very high gear inch number is around 125. For us to be able to go from 9.5 gear inches up to 136 you know, is really fantastic and really needed, or not, perhaps not needed, but uh, really highly desirable on a trike where you're just not going to be wanting to um, ever walk the bike, walk the trike around. Um, interestingly, in Granny Gear, um, on my trike, I go 76 centimetres with a full revolution of the cranks. So uh, it's, it's a pretty slow journey uphill. Um, in granny gear. Um, equally 10.8 metres in the highest gear. So if we refer to the table above where I might have an RPM going downhill of maybe say 100 RPM, um, we're looking at well over 60 kilometres an hour is the potential of that trike to still have um, you know, resistance on the pedals as you're pedalling um, down a hill. Um, having done around 60 to 70 k's on, on a trike, I can tell you that's plenty fast enough for me. But uh, hopefully uh, all of that clears up um, a bit about cycle gearing and what gear inches are and what development is and that they're really easy to calculate. And so perhaps next time you're buying a bike or, or looking at setting up your bike with ideal gearing for your location, whether you're in a hilly area or a flat area, you can do those simple calculations and um, and then compare the gear inches of the bikes that you're considering buying or perhaps the gear inches of the sprockets that you're going to choose and whether you need to go with a mountain drive or a dual drive as I've done in this hilly area where we are. 
um, and set your your bike or your trike up the way you wanted.